I got her mounted on the left turn right now. Well, appreciate y'all watching the channel. Um, again, this is kind of new to me sharing this type of stuff because obviously I don't want to be known as somebody who tries to say I know it all. But yeah, uh, to my to my left over here is my good friend Stevie Williams and hey, Stevie, obviously deer hunter and like me and a lot of people watching love deer meat. And so there's the question is how do you go about quartering up a deer? To some of you guys watching this, you're thinking, man, I done quartered up thousands. Well, a lot of people, obviously, YouTube's a good place to come for knowledge. And it's a place for us men can come on and we can learn things that our pride won't let us ask questions about. So we thought we'd put on the Bone Collector channel uh, just a simple quartering up a deer. So with that, like I started the video, I don't want to be somebody who pretends to know it all. I don't know it all, but what I'm going to show you is how me and Stevie growing up in uh, rural Meriwether County, him working at Piggly Wiggly and different grocery stores and me just, you know, obviously in some cases not having the money to process all the deer that we shot. You know, you was forced to uh, to to quarter up your deer and to do different uh, things with them. As well as big game hunting like we do all across the country with Bone Collector, there's a lot of times you can't just take a deer with the guts or without a guts or an elk are you know moose and you can't just throw them in the back of a truck or a utv and take them out of the woods so you got to learn how to quarter up an animal just to pack them up so we're going to give you the basics on just skinning out an animal and how we quarter up an animal again this ain't how it's got to be done this is just how we do it and how we do it especially in a controlled situation like this where we got a deer hanging off a single tree there's a lot of different other areas and times you can go about it if you got an animal laying on the ground, whether it be an elk, and you don't have saws and you don't have different things, obviously you can quarter up a complete animal, even the biggest of animals, with just a pocket knife without a saw. It just makes it more difficult. But in this case, we got the comforts of a, of a nice big grown Georgia doe hanging on a single tree, and we're going to quarter this doe up and show you how we do it. Well, the first thing we do is uh, a lot of times I like to go ahead, like Stevie did here, just take a sawzall and cut the deer's legs off right here. We're going to skin this deer all the way out. Another thing right here, um, you can see this animal has been tubed out. But a lot of times what I'll do, I'll just go in here right here just with the saws on and cut this pelvis bone out just to get it out of my way. A lot of different ways you can do this too. I know a lot of people that will take and they'll cut the deer all the way down the middle and make a half. But what I personally like to do, if I got a single tree to work off of, is to take my time and to skin it out first, and then I can start working on each quarter as it's hanging. Because if I skin this, if I split it down the middle all the way right now, it's going to be oblong, going to be dangling around like a little old teeter totten, and that ain't going to be as easy for us to work on it. Second step is I always take the hide off. Um, that could be a whole nother video in itself. However, we're not going to bore you with skinning an animal, pretty self-explanatory. Um, when you skin an animal, I always like to make sure, if you look at the grain of a hair, if you want to keep little hair on your meat, make sure to go with the grain. If you go against it, you're going to be knocking hair out. But if I go that way, um, I'm not. So just pay attention with the hair, and then that way cut to the hair, and that way you're not going to put as much hair on your meat. But I like to get the hide all the way off, it makes it easy on this single tree. There's a lot of different ways people can do that. I've even seen a lot of places, that, you know, I know you have two Steve. Yeah. They'll take a knuckle into the floor, get it started, then they'll wad up that hide, then they'll use the winch and you can skin it almost like a rabbit. But in this case, we're just gonna use our Havilons and we're just gonna skin them all the way out, down the shoulders, and this thing will look like a, a big old squirrel when we're done without a hide. And we'll start quartering this thing out. There is also a way that if you want to quarter out an animal in the field like a moose or stuff like that and caribou I see a lot of outfitter friends of mine and guides they'll leave the hide on and quarter with a pocket knife and don't take the hide off because then the hide itself will protect from dirt leaves and trash and brush and impurities when you throw it in truck throwing it on uh, pack mules and things like that so sometimes you can leave this hide on just as a protective layer and it keeps you a, a lot of uh, time not invested in skinning at that point so we're gonna get the hide off this animal. All right, we uh, got him completely skinned out and this deer was shot with a 6.5 and so this is the exit. So luckily, I think most of the good part of the shoulder we can salvage. Um, so we're gonna start quartering this animal up. Just a big old pretty clean doe, she's fat. One thing you wanna do in, in wild game is 
uh, you don't want the fat so obviously you can come back and trim that back out but from this point on we can quarter them up and then we can take this quarters on for our own processing or take it to the processor or again exactly what we're doing here on this hundred pound white tail doe from Georgia the exact same mechanic mechanics and the anatomy of an elk or moose are basically the same just bigger in scale so here's something pretty cool a lot of people know but a lot of people don't but you can take just a regular knife even a smaller knife than this and a shoulder uh, this one's obviously shot up pretty bad but a shoulder don't even need you don't even have to have you don't even have to have a uh, saw to get a shoulder off so that right there is all you got to do and we're going down what I do is usually get some of that neck meat with that. So we'll trim all that bad that may have been bloodshot from that rifle. So Stevie will grab that other shoulder and we'll put this one up and go on with the quarter. There's a blade right here that you can go behind. And come in with your fat. And it comes right down. Just like that. So that would be considered one of the quarters. Um, the next part that we'll get out is the back strap. Deer have two different, uh, it's funny, if you're from the south, a lot of people call everything the back strap. But in reality, here lies the back strap, and inside here is your tenderloin. Um, a lot of times this would be the prized possession that somebody wants. They'll want these little small tenderloins off the uh, deer. But if you don't know any better, they're easy to leave. They're internal, but you just pretty much take your knife and you can just debone this tenderloin right off the rib meat here. You, once you find this rib where it sits, you just come in here, find the bone. And they're not a big piece of meat, but they're a very valuable piece of meat. You just lay that right off that cavity that that little tenderloin sits in. Not a huge piece of meat. Again, I highly recommend trimming all this fat out before you package it. That wild game fat is typically way bitter, unlike beef fat that's you know on a ribeye or a good KC strip. Stevie's taking out the uh, the other tenderloin. So there's two tenderloins on the inside of the cavity, and then on this side of the um, got that joker but on this side of the deer on the back strap you have two nice beautiful back strap that's my favorite part of a deer usually what i'll do on the front end is you'll see there's like a little sinew and like a little protective coating right there um, over that deer i'll a lot of times go ahead and just get that off first so i can see what i'm working with but what you have here and you'll see once i get this part of the sinew out you can almost see it you see the fat of the deer you can almost see this running right down the spine right down this neck and it runs a good ways that being the neck meat right there but this back strap is going to go all the way tight on the spine all the way up to about his roast or his ham and so all you got to do to get it out is find the spine take your knife run it right down through there just go all the way down same exact if it's a moose if it's an antelope mule deer exact same scenario and you'll feel this knife hit his hip so that's far as I can go there. When I hit that hip, you can just turn, angle kind of back, and give you an incision back toward the rib. And you can see there's still some good meat that can be part of this ham, or you can go back and trim that up. But once I hit that, I typically go back right there, and you can see the incision all the way down. Then you just turn your knife. You'll feel the curvature of his ribs going back toward his spine. Take your knife, and you might have to readjust your angle based on what you're getting off but try to skim as much as you can off the top of those ribs. And it's basically a, like a V incision. And I go down as far as I can, even into that neck, to that neck and get pretty much as much as I can down through there. Because again, this is my favorite part of a deer. You can cut these up in little mignons. You can grill them, you can do whatever. And then I, once I get the second part, I just come back where I started and just pull that right off just pull this right off where I made that bit, that cut. And that is a great whitetail backstrap. 
very lean meat. You can cut that son of a gun in little mignons as you want it, half inch to inch thick. Throw them on a grill, cook them rare. They're delicious. Steve, you grab that other back strap and we'll put this in here. So we're getting on down the road. So typically, as we've already processed or got a lot of this deer put took off, we're left with the hams. But what I think of as a quarter, that means four parts, is I think of the shoulders, kind of that neck and shoulder part that you're quartering up. And, and then I think of the back straps being one of those quarters. Then I think of these hams being part of those quarters. So what you're left with at this point here in this process is the two hams as you see here which have the most meat on any game whether it's elk moose or deer but you are left in this situation with after you take these final quarters you're left with this real meat so you got to check your game and fish laws if you can see right here this side of this real meat there's not a lot of meat in between whitetail ribs um, ribs can be pretty delicious i got a lot of friends that love to barbecue them and cook them just like they do their pork ribs and stuff i've never been a big fan of venison ribs so a lot of times uh, the ribs, if there's any place that's not utilized as much, it is the rib. The way we took the back strap off, we pretty much got the majority of all the neck meat off this particular doe. Now a whitetail buck is gonna have a bigger neck, so you got a lot of more neck roast and stuff like that. I know Stevie, his neck, he loves a neck roast more than he does anything, but there's not much of a neck roast on a whitetail doe, and we kind of trimmed it off thick uh, as we did the back strap. So if you do want to take these rib meat, which I would recommend, for anybody who kills their first deer, if you're going to do this, try it all and you're going to find the different parts of the deer that you like better. This is good meat, it's just not a lot of meat in between. But the perfect way to do this for a whitetail is to get your saws off, cordless saws off, something like this. And all you got to do, as you can see, and all I do is come right here, we're going to cut back down, so try not to quarter up Stevie back there. Come down, and then you can just go right down this rib cavity same cavity that we took the back strap off of. And then you got the ribs. Now, if you're in the field, if you got a nice saw, you can do the same with a moose uh, or an elk. But a lot of times, moose and elk have a lot more meat in between it. So a lot of times, you'll just take your knife and you'll fillet all this meat out in between each individual rib. Plus, if you're packing out moose or elk, you don't really want this rib bone because that is what weighs a lot. You get the lighter pack by just flaying off the meat. But that is a good slab of whitetail deer ribs. A lot of times people don't use these as much, but they can be good eating. In this case, on this other side, you can see that the majority, if you see on that left side of this dough, got tore up pretty good by that 6.5. So there's not a lot of good quality meat left here. So we're all the way down to the hams, and that's the last part of this quarter and we'll have this deer quartered up. So we're down to the final part of, part of quartering this deer up. Again, we've been very lucky and blessed to have a single tree to work this deer off of. If you put this on the ground out in the field, it's twice as hard, it's twice as difficult and aggravating. We have the, you know, the, the opportunity to have a nice saw here that we can use. Um, in, in this case, we're gonna show you the easy way that you can take just a good sawzall, just a typical blade, and to get this ham off. Now, Stevie, hold it. This thing is gonna try to fall off the single tree. It pretty much just come right off this pelvic area right here. And there, there we go. So you can see we got this ham hanging off. I'll zap this leg off right here, and then I got good solid meat. I, from this point, I can start deboning this off, or I can take it straight to the processor, or I can pack it off. Stevie is telling you what you can do right there without the saw. Well, this here, if you don't have a saw that you can use, there's a bone right here that you follow down and you cut, and you can bone it out, and it rolls off the knuckle. Basically what Stevie's doing here, if you do not have the comforts of having a nice saw, whether it's a manual saw that you might have in your pack, you can start whittling away and go right down the bone structure of this deer and you'll get to that pelvic you know, joint. And it takes a little more of a time. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And you can actually completely take this ham off right here without using any saw or sawing through anything. 
and 90 percent of the time when you're in the field especially in the elk and the moose woods that's the way it's done and stevie's got it down to a point right there that it's almost completely off he's got it all the way down to the knuckle there'll be some like there you'll see that ball and you see stevie just took this whole ham off without the use of a saw and so that's another way you can do it and the best way to learn if you're going to go on a lot of elk or moose trips so pretty much this deer is completely quartered up the last part's a ham this is the carcass you can see we went from 100 pounds of deer down to probably 10 pounds of a carcass including these bones you can come back through and take this carcass throw it into your workshop table and you can get a lot more meat and maybe make some nice stir fry you can probably steal another i'd say off this carcass another pound of meat but that right there is the short easy way when you have an opportunity to quarter up a deer again you can replicate that in the field or off a single tree and we did that off a single tree so i hope this helps hope you like these kind of videos subscribe to our channel let us know what you want to learn we're not claiming to know everything we've just been blessed to grow up this way and hunt and fish and do a lot of cool things like this and we just want to share what we have learned and also if you see an easier way of something we missed or another tip that you can give us comment below man because this is how we learn especially us men who have a lot of pride we can learn a lot from each other because if you look at all the experience that we all have my goodness there ain't much we can't fix or do or learn to be better at so uh, hope you all enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe god bless